This is lesson 3.2, solving linear equations by graphing. Your objectives are to solve equations by graphing and to estimate solutions to linear equations by graphing. You can solve an equation by graphing the related function. The solution of the equation is the x-intercept of the function. The x-intercept is also called a zero because y is zero at that point. For example, that point on the example question, the x-intercept has a y value of zero. When y equals zero, whatever x is, is the solution. And when we graph these, we're looking for the point on the graph where it crosses the x-axis. That's called the solution, and since it happens when y equals zero, it's also called a zero. Solve each equation. Number one, 3x minus 3 equals zero. Remember, we're solving for x. Set the equation equal to zero, which it is. Everything is all on one side of the equal sign. And then replace the zero with f of x. So I really have f of x equals 3x minus 3. Now make a table. An x column. An f of x equals 3x minus 3 column. When we work that out, we'll have an f of x column. And then finally, a x comma f of x column. Remember, f of x is the same as y. So I've got x's, I substitute in, solve for the y's, and then I have a set of points x comma y. We use f of x because we know this is a function. We're substituting in an x value, and we're finding out the function's y value. It's a good idea to just use negative 1, 0, and 1 for your x values. You can use any point you want to, but if you use those three points, that'll give you a good set of points to connect and then finish the question. So substitute in negative 1. f of negative 1 is 3 times negative 1 minus 3, which is negative 3 minus 3, which is negative 6. So we have a point, negative 1, negative 6. When x is 0, find f of 0, which is 3 times 0 minus 3. 3 times 0 is 0, and 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So our next point is 0, comma, negative 3. When x is 1, find f of 1, which is 3 times 1 minus 3. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. So we have the point 1, comma, 0. Now let's plot those points. Negative 1, negative 6 goes just a hair off the graph. 0, negative 3 is right there. And 1, 0 is right there. Connect the dots. Now where's the x-intercept? It's right there with an x value of 1. So for this equation, x equals 1. Once you have plotted the points and graphed the line, find the x-intercept, and that's your solution, and that's your final answer. For number 2, if your graph is already drawn, ignore that because that is a mistake. So let's pretend the graph is empty. Negative 2x plus 1 equals 5 minus 2x. Let's get everything on one side so that there's a 0 on one side. So first, to move the x's, I have negative 2x on the left. Let's add it to both sides. Negative 2x plus 2x is 0, leaving a 1. And on the right, negative 2x plus x is a 0 leaving a 5. So 1 equals 5. I remember something before saying what happens when the variables disappear and I have something that's not true. 
Do you remember what that was? Let's continue moving things. We can subtract 1 from each side, and 0 equals 4. Now I have a 0 on one side. That's what f of x is. So f of x equals 4. Make your table. x, f of x equals 4, f of x, and then the ordered pair, x comma f of x. Remember my x values are negative 1, 0, and 1. And now I'll substitute each of those in. Be aware that this is going to look a little bit weird. Just go with it. f of negative 1, there's nowhere to substitute the negative 1. So it's still just a 4. That f of x value is 4. So I have the ordered pair negative 1 comma 4. When x is 0, f of 0, there's still nowhere to substitute the x, so that's still a 4. The same is true for f of 1. That's still a 4. For all of these, no matter what the x value is, the y value is 4. When you put anything into the function, it spits out a 4. So now I'll plot those points, negative 1, 4, 0, 4, and 1, 4, giving me a horizontal line right there. The solution is the x-intercept, but the line never crosses the x-axis, so there is no x-intercept. There is no solution. And if you remember, when we were back here at 1 equals 5, remember when the variables cancel out and you have a false statement, then there is no solution. And it works just the same here for the graph. Number 3, negative x plus 4 equals 0. Well, I already have everything on one side, and I have a 0 on the other side. So we can go ahead and replace the 0 with f of x. So f of x equals negative x plus 4. I can make my table, the x column. The f of x equals negative x plus 4 column. Whatever that turns out to, f of x, remember that's your y value, and then the ordered pair x comma f of x which is really x comma y. Remember to use the x values negative 1, 0, and 1 and substitute in. For negative 1, f of negative 1 is negative negative 1, be careful there, plus 4. Negative of negative 1 is positive 1. 1 plus 4 is 5, giving you the ordered pair negative 1, comma, 5. When x is 0, find f of 0, which is negative 0 plus 4. Negative 0 is just 0. 0 plus 4 is 4. So we have the ordered pair 0 comma 4. When x is 1, find f of 1, which is negative 1 plus 4. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. So we have the point 1 comma 3. We can plot those three points and connect the dots. And remember, the x-intercept is my solution. That's where y is 0. That's why the solution is also called a 0. The x-intercept is right there, and that's where x equals 4. 
So the final answer, x equals 4. Remember, that's called the solution, and it's also called a zero. It's called a zero because that's where y equals zero. Number six, negative 3x plus 1 equals zero. Well, it's already solved for zero, so let's replace the zero with f of x. f of x equals negative 3x plus 1. Now make your table, your x column, your f of x equals negative 3x plus 1 column, your f of x column, and your x comma f of x column. Remember, that's your x comma y column, because y and f of x are the same thing. x is negative 1, 0, and 1. Then we'll substitute those x values in and solve for y, which is f of x. When x is negative 1, f of negative 1 is negative 3 times negative 1 plus 1. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. So you have the point negative 1 comma 4. When x is 0, f of 0 is negative 3 times 0 plus 1. Negative 3 times 0 is 0. Plus 1 is 1. So 0 comma 1 is the next point. When x is 1, f of 1 is negative 3 times 1 plus 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. And negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So you have the point 1 comma negative 2. You now have your three points. Plot them on the graph. Negative 1, 4. 0, 1. 1, negative 2, and connect the dots. The solution is the x-intercept, which is right there. It's between 0 and 1. That actually has a value of 1 third. And the reason I know that's 1 third is because I solved the original equation, just to make sure. If you look at it, negative 3x plus 1 equals 0. You can subtract 1 from each side, giving you negative 3x on the left and negative 1 on the right. And when you divide both sides by negative 3, the negative 3's cancel on the left, leaving x. And negative 1 divided by negative 3 is a positive 1 third. So when you do these, if it's between two numbers, you can solve the original equation and get that exact value if you want. Sometimes graphing does not provide an exact solution but only an estimate. In these cases, solve algebraically to find the exact solution. Number one. Jessica wants to record her favorite songs to one CD. The function C equals 80 minus 3.22 N represents the recording time C available after N songs are recorded. Find the zero of this function and describe what this value means in this context. So since it's solved for C, then C is like the Y and N is like the X. So we have the table with a N column and we'll use the values for n that's at the bottom of the, the graph over there. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And then the c equals 80 minus 3.22 n column. After we substitute in those numbers, we'll find what c is. And then we'll have some ordered pairs to plot. So treat these the exact same way as before. Substitute in 5. And if you want to just trust me on the math here, C is 64, giving you the ordered pair of 5, 64. Substitute in 10. 
you get 48. 10 comma 48. Substitute in 15, you get 32 with the point 15 comma 32. Remember, the N is like the X and the C is like the Y. Substitute 20 in. You get about 16. And these are estimates. These are close to those numbers for C. Not exactly. And when you substitute in 25, it's almost zero. So I'll go ahead and put zero there. So now we have a set of points that we can plot on the graph. Once you have those points, plot them on the graph. Draw the line. And the x-intercept occurs where the number of songs is about 25. So the zero, remember that's another name for the solution, is about n equals 25, which means after recording 25 songs, the time is up. So do the same thing as before. Make a table, substitute in, find your y values, which is c in this case. Find the x-intercept, which is right there, where there's about 25 for the value there. After 25 songs, the time is up. Number two. Enrique uses a gift card to buy coffee at a coffee shop. The initial value of the gift card is $20, and the function n equals 20 minus 2.75c represents the amount of money still left on the gift card n after purchasing c cups of coffee. Find the zero of this function and describe what it means in this context. Well, we'll make a c column. c is like x. And we'll use the values on the graph there, 2, 4, 6, 8. We have the function written next where we'll substitute the values in. The n column, which will be like y. And then c comma n for our points, which will be like x comma y. So if you want to just trust me on the math here, substitute in our c values. When c is 2, n is 14.5. When C is 4, N is 9. When C is 6, N is 3.5. And when C is 8, N is negative 2. So that gives us those ordered pairs. So let's plot those points. 2 comma 14.5, 4 comma 9, 6 comma 3.5, and 8 comma negative 2. When you draw the line, the c-intercept is about 7. So that's what the zero of the function is. That means that after you buy 7 cups of coffee, the card is empty. So treat these the exact same way. Make your table, substitute in, and get your points. And then make sense out of it. When you buy two cups of coffee, there's $14.50 left on the card. Buy four cups of coffee, there's $9 left on the card. Buy six cups of coffee, you got three fifty dollars left on the card, and so on. Put it into context and describe what it means based on what the variables stand for.